Hi everyone, I'm Paul Parmelo. Thank you for joining me today. This is my 2014 Victory Cross Country Tour. Today, we're going to do an in-depth look at the cruise control feature on this bike. We're going to look at everything from testing, troubleshooting, and the locations of every device on this bike used for the cruise control feature. So let's get started. First thing we're going to look at is the control panel. Three momentary dual action switches, on off, resume accelerate, and set decelerate. The on off button also has a red LED that will illuminate when you've turned on the cruise control. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got power to the module. You could have a broken wire, the module might be disconnected, it doesn't matter, this will still light. What most people don't realize is that even though these three switches are dual action, they only send one signal to the cruise module. And the cruise module will decide what to do with that signal in a logical manner. For instance, it doesn't matter if I push on or off. If the cruise is off, it will toggle to the on position and vice versa. And I kind of like that feature. It's easier for me while I'm riding to reach the top of the switches than to stretch and reach the bottom. So if I want to turn the module on or off, I can just simply press the top button. Same thing if I want to adjust my speed. I can press the accelerate button by simply pressing the top of the button or decelerate by pressing the top of the button. There's a built-in diagnostic routine for the cruise control. What we're going to do is we're going to test the control panel buttons. We are going to be watching the dash for the cruise indicator to light up. We are also going to be testing three cutoff switches to cancel the cruise and two sensory inputs. First thing we have to do is turn on main power. So I'm going to turn on the ignition and the run switch has to be on. We can test the first switch, of course, by simply pushing it on or off. You'll see the red LED lights up. Doesn't matter which way I push the switch, so we know that switch is now working. With the LED off, to get into the diagnostic mode, we're going to hold down the middle button, accelerate, and we're going to turn on the cruise. While we hold these down, notice your cruise indicator on your dash is lit up. When we let go of the buttons, it shuts off. This is important. We are in the diagnostic mode right now. Now, every time we press one of the other two switches, the light should light up. As you can see, whether I push down or up, the indicator light on the dash lights up. Same thing with the third switch. Every time you push it, it will light on the dash. We have now tested all three switches, both in the up and the down position, and we know they work well. We also have three cutoff switches. First one is the front brakes. When I push in the brake lever, it turns on the indicator light. Let go, it shuts off. We can test this. There's also the throttle cutoff switch. When you roll it back past idle, it will enable the switch to cut off the cruise control. And again, turning it, you see the indicator light. Also the rear brake pedal. When I push down on it, the indicator light lights up. So that was the three cutoff switches. There's also two sensory inputs. One of them is the vehicle speed sensor. It detects movement of the bike and it will have the cruise indicator on the dash flash at a steady rate. In order to simulate that, we have to move the bike about six feet, two meters. Being that I can't have the camera following me while I'm doing this, I'm going to just simply move the bike back bring it back forward, that will activate the indicator light, and then I'll show you what it looks like. 
Okay, I rolled the bike back six feet and then brought it back to where the camera is. Even though we're stopped, you can see the indicator light is blinking at a fixed rate. That verifies the vehicle speed sensor. I'm going to shut off the bike for the next test. The final sensor input is the engine RPM. This is taken from the tachometer signal. In order to do that, of course, I need to start up the bike. So we're going to make sure we're in neutral, we're going to start up the bike, and we're going to go back into diagnostics by pressing the middle button and turning the cruise control on. We'll let go of the buttons. The indicator light on the dash will now flash according to the engine RPM speed. Now I'm not going to have the bike running too long because my garage door is closed and I don't want to die. If you remember, going into the diagnostic mode, we had to enable it. The indicator light would come on on the dash, and then when you let go of the button, the indicator light would go out. And that was very important, because if it stayed on, that's telling you that one of your three cancel switches is stuck in the on position. And the only way to figure out which one it is, is to disconnect them one by one. It could be your front brake lever a little mechanical switch underneath. Very easy to get to, and all you have to do is just unplug one of the wires, and that would remove that switch from the circuit. Or it could be your rear brake switch. Now that one is a pressure switch located on the brake line in front of the engine, down underneath where the regulator rectifier is. And again, just pull off the connector and that will remove that switch from the circuit. But chances are you would know if it was one of those switches cancelling your cruise control because your brake lights would also be on. But the one switch that causes 90% of the problems is the throttle cancel switch. And that is because people modify it by either adding a quarter turn throttle ring into your throttle housing or changing the bars, whatever, they've had to readjust the cables, thus putting stress on the switch to cancel the cruise control. The switch is on what's called the push cable. The throttle has two cables, a pull that's used to accelerate and the push used to slow down. Technically, they both pull, but it would be confusing to have them both called the same thing. It's very easy to get to the throttle cancel switch. You turn your wheel far left and the switch is located at the front of the gas tank between it and the frame. Two single wire connectors and it's very easy to just pull one out and disconnect that from the system. And speaking of sensors, if you remember the vehicle speed sensor we tested earlier, well, it's located on the left-hand side of the engine just behind the rear jug. Easy to get to, easy to disconnect, and easy to test. Now let's take a look at the cruise control module itself. It's underneath the seat. Victory in all its wisdom stuck it way down inside that hole. And this right here is the 10 wire connector used to power the module. Female end is the wiring harness and this part goes down to the module. And if you need to know if there's power here, this corner pin, pin A, this is the white with blue stripe, that's your power, that's your 12 volts. And remember, the red LED on the control panel will be lit even though you may not have power here. So before the dealer wants to charge you big bucks for a new module, check your pins. The cruise control module shares its power with the 10 amp fuse for the turn signal and the horn on the right hand side of the bike in the fuse box.
So if someone tells you to check your fuse, if your cruise control isn't working, well, if your horn is working, then it's not the fuse. You know, the tests we did are for so much more than just the cruise control. All these sensors and switches are used for other things as well. For instance, uh, let's say your brake light doesn't work. Uh, you bring it into the dealer, they tell you you need a new switch. Well, you could test that before bringing it in. At least you'll know if they are taking advantage of you. Same thing with your gear selector on your dash. Um, you can test the vehicle speed sensor and the tachometer signal going to the bike uh, to see what the problem may be. And even if you can't fix it yourself, at least you'll know if someone's taking advantage of you. Now, I know that this has been a longer than normal video. I know I've given you a lot of information, but information is power and you can use this to help fix your bike. It will hopefully save you time, money, and make it easier on you. Thank you for watching my video today. Ride safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time.